Hey, Martial Arts Addicts all over the world. Thank you to everyone who watched my last video and thank you to those who posted comments. I really enjoyed reading them all and responding. I've got another video for you all today, but before I start, please continue to like and comment and please, please, please do subscribe to my channel. Today's topic is a philosophical one on an aspect of judo training called randori. Now for those that are unfamiliar with judo, randori basically means free practice or free sparring. So judo sessions, they're usually broken down into different sections. So you do a warm up and you might practice some balance breaking and repetition exercises called uchikomi. And then you practice full on throws. Now after this, a large chunk of the session consists of randori which is where you get to practice judo techniques against a resisting partner. So you're trying to throw your partner and they're trying to throw you. Technically, you can apply all the techniques found in judo as long as they adhere to the judo rules. Now, based on the fact that randori is sparring, it might be surprising to think that we can have a philosophical discussion about it. But Jigoro Kano, the founder of judo, actually wrote about the philosophical aspect of judo randori. And in this video, I'm going to do my best to explain exactly that. For Jigoro Kano, his judo was concerned about the understanding and commitment to a principle he called maximum efficiency. And we can define this principle as using the least amount of energy in order to bring about a successful outcome. In judo randori, that would be the throw. You might have also heard maximum efficiency as being defined as using minimum effort for maximum effect. To give you a better understanding of this principle, we can look at it like this. The ju in judo can be translated as soft or gentle. And it's in reference to the concept of giving way or yielding to a greater force than what you can apply. So the best way to understand this is if we look at one of those weeping willow trees. Now the branches are very flexible and so the tree kind of droops. It doesn't look as strong in comparison to something like an oak tree. However, in heavy snowfall, the boughs of, a, of an oak tree can break if the weight of the snow is too heavy. In comparison, the willow tree continually yields to the weight of the snow, allowing the snow to simply fall off it so that the tree remains intact. If you think about it, more energy is spent trying to keep a weight up in the air. Letting that weight drop to the floor uses very little energy and that's a general idea behind this concept. Now in traditional Jiu Jitsu they do have the same principle in which the techniques are achieved not by opposing an oncoming force but instead by kind of yielding to it. So theoretically you're aiming to allow that force to continue going but you redirect it in a way that enables you to avoid the impact. In Jiu Jitsu and Judo you aim to take that force and allow it to meet something harder than itself, which is the ground. However, what Kano recognised is that in Jiu Jitsu, following the principle of maximum efficiency is not the main concern. Incapacitating your opponent is what traditional Jiu Jitsu is all about. Therefore, if you beat an opponent through sheer strength alone, that's absolutely fine because that's the aim. But Kano, however, in judo, the adhering to the principle of maximum efficiency is what matters most. Now, in 1932, uh, Jigoro Kano gave a lecture called The Contribution of Judo to Education at a conference in California. And I just want to read something that he said in that conference. Now, he said, in Randori, we teach the pupil to act on the fundamental principles of judo, no matter how physically inferior his opponent may seem to him. And even if by sheer strength, he can easily overcome him because if he acts contrary to principle his opponent will never be convinced of defeat no matter what brute strength he may have used. What's really important about this is that Kano seems to be saying that success in judo can only be claimed if the opponent feels that they were defeated not by force but because they were the victim to their opponent's adherence to the principle of maximum efficiency. I'm pretty sure that everyone who's trained in judo or even Brazilian Jiu Jitsu can understand what Kano means by this. In BJJ for example, you know that there are guys, they're so skilled in what they do, when you spar them, no matter how much strength you put up against them, 
They're able to smoothly control you and sometimes you just feel like a baby being rolled around on the mat. Well, you go up against a higher grade and they allow you to continuously attack them whilst they seem to just easily and effortlessly escape. And I'll be honest, I've felt this in a lot of combat sports, including boxing and kickboxing. The more experienced guys, they don't bother with strength. They just convince you of their kind of superiority through skill. Um, and that's a skill that they've acquired and developed through years and years of practice. And it's this experience that makes you want to learn the art even more. Okay, due to our egos, it's easy to fall into the habit of trying to use strength a lot. Um, and a lot of us do that, and I, I, including myself. But what you learn has to be effective against whoever you face. So if you're going to rely on strength, then you're going to have a problem when you come up against someone who's stronger than you. Aside from that, if I spar a smaller and weaker person than me, and I just use my strength to overcome them, they won't be convinced that I've won. They'll probably be thinking that all I do is use my strength rather than using BJJ to submit them, etc. And it's pretty true. Really, I should take the opportunity to be as technical as possible. The sparring partner, they're gonna do better and they probably will beat me as well. However, by taking that path, I would have learned a lot more about what I need to improve on in BJJ than if I'd just smashed the training partner with my strength. Likewise, my sparring partner would have also had the opportunity to learn a lot more than if I, than I just used my strength to beat them. And that's one of the important philosophical principles that Jigoro Kano stressed the principle of mutual welfare and benefit. Despite one training partner being bigger and stronger than the other, by focusing on the factors that constitute the principle of maximum efficiency, you know, balance breaking, entering into the correct position and taking advantage of the loss of balance, etc. Both players can learn something from the round of Randori. In regards to philosophy, how can this be transferred to our life outside of the dojo? Now, Jigoro Kano seems to be interested in judo being applied to a particular branch of philosophy called ethics or moral philosophy. Now, ethics is about understanding moral principles. And in effect, we want to know if how we are living or behaving is good. Ultimately, how do we live the good life? For Jigoro Kano, the more people who have an understanding of mutual welfare and benefit and are eager to follow that principle in their daily lives, better it will be for, for society as a whole. Now, in a way, you could argue that Jigoro Kano was advocating a form of societal utilitarianism, which is having a society that brings about the greatest amount of good for the greatest amount of people. And the principle of mutual welfare and benefit is a tool, according to Kano, that will bring this about. It's pretty much like living in a society in which each person is equally concerned about the welfare of others as much as they are about their own welfare. It's basically a principle of equality, a principle where everybody gains. It's really a nice notion. And can I believe that the recognition of these principles and ideas are what bring about bodies such as back then the League of Nations or like we have now, the United Nations so that world leaders can come together and attempt to maintain things like international peace and friendly relationships between different nations. If you remember earlier on, we said that in Randori, if you overcome your opponent using strength, Kano believe that the opponent will never be convinced that you won the bout. However, if you do beat the opponent, relying on maximum efficiency, so you're, you're breaking their balance and taking advantage of that at the appropriate time, then the opponent will feel that the throw was done without any effort. Not only will then they agree that they lost, they will also be convinced of the importance of practicing in, in accordance with the principle of maximum efficiency. So you convince them, not by forcing your will upon them, but instead by following a logical process that proves that the principle is true. Looking at this again from an ethics or moral philosophical viewpoint, Kano related this to how we debate with other people. So when we're trying to convince others that we're right about something. I mean, look at what happens when we discuss politics. Political debate is great when we're talking to like-minded people. However, when we're discussing politics with others who disagree with our polit political beliefs, the debate can get very, very heated. Even to the point where family members no longer speak to each other and, you know, friendships uh, break up. 
Now, in these situations, when debating with someone who has a political opinion that offends us, we might resort to shouting in order to get that person to believe in our view. It's almost like we're thinking that the louder we can shout, the more aggressive we can look, the greater the chance that that person will shift to follow our opinion. But in reality, that's just forcing our opinion onto that person. Ultimately, they may say that they agree with us, but they won't really be convinced. Kano believes that you have to take the logical approach. Your argument is what needs to be strong, and so do your counters to their arguments. They need to be so strong that even if you whispered them, your opponent would understand that you, in fact, do have a valid argument. Kano seems to value logical persuasion, not coercion. So you shouting at someone to take your point of view rather than using logical debate is akin to purely using strength in randori rather than utilising the principle of maximum efficiency. The next time you're debating politics or maybe having a difference of opinion with your loved ones or for that matter sparring against a weaker opponent, remember those two principles, maximum efficiency and mutual welfare and benefit. Maybe if more of our world leaders adopted that way of thinking, it could help with resolving many of the issues we face. And with that, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. Again, please hit the like button, leave a comment and please subscribe to my channel. Nice one guys, and until next time, peace and love to all martial arts addicts all over the world.